Today in the Quadratech Academy, we're talking brakes. Hey, Rob here for Quadratech. Welcome to another episode of the Quadratech Academy. Today, I'm walking you through the steps to replace your front pads and rotors of your 2018 or newer Jeep Wrangler JL or 20 or newer Jeep Gladiator JT. I'm gonna be using my Gladiator Rubicon to do this job. So while the tool list I go over may be specific to this job, doing a front pad and rotor replacement is pretty similar across the board, no matter which your Wrangler or other Jeep vehicle you have. So if you can follow along with these major steps, you should be able to tackle your own brake job at home without any problems at all. This job is pretty simple. It doesn't really require many specialized tools. I bet you have most, if not everything you already need at home in your garage. Today I'm gonna to be using an impact wrench along with a long handle socket wrench. We'll need a 21 millimeter socket a T30 Torx socket along with a socket wrench to go along with that, a 13 millimeter ratchet wrench, box end wrench, or even a 13 millimeter socket will work just fine. You're gonna need a wire brush along with a small pry tool or a long handle screwdriver will come in handy. You're gonna need some disc brake caliper lubricant along with some brake clean. Now, because we are using chemicals, it's important to protect your skin with some gloves and protect your eyes with some safety glasses. It's also important to protect whatever surfaces under your Jeep while you're working so you don't end up with a really big mess. We're gonna be cleaning a lot of grime and brake dust off the system as we work here, so having something like an oil pan is gonna come in handy to make cleanup go a lot easier. You're gonna need a brake caliper hanger or some stiff wire to support the brake caliper while you're working and a large C-clamp. You're gonna be removing your wheels from the vehicle to do this job. So of course you're gonna need a floor jack as well as some jack stands. I've got my Jeep up on the lift and ready to go. The first thing we're gonna do is to give the brake system a quick but thorough cleaning. With everything cleaned off, before I take anything apart, one of the first things I like to do is go ahead and compress the pistons back into the caliper. It's gonna make the job of putting the caliper back on top of the new pads later on go a lot smoother. Now you can wait and do this later with a caliper tool like this or even a large C-clamp, but I find it really easy to do with the caliper still mounted in place and the old pads in place. The first thing you wanna do is make sure you go ahead and remove the cap from your brake master cylinder reservoir and then using a large C-clamp, simply place it around the caliper, pushing against the brake pads, twisting the handle. You can see it's gonna compress those pistons right back into the caliper. Next, loosen, then remove the two 13 millimeter bolts on the caliper slide pins. With those removed, we can lift the caliper off and support it with a caliper hanger or a heavy piece of wire. Go ahead and remove the brake pads along with the pad clips. Now, if you were only gonna be replacing the pads, at this point we could install new clips and pads because we're gonna be removing the rotor as well. We need to go ahead and get the caliper mounting bracket out of the way first. At this point, we can use the 21 millimeter socket along with a long handle socket wrench or your impact gun to remove the two caliper mounting bolts. And these are gonna be on there very tight because you gotta remember, this bracket is what's gonna stand up to all the forces when those pads clamp against that rotor to slow your vehicle down. With those two bolts removed, lift the caliper mounting bracket out of the way. Using the T30 torque socket and socket wrench, as well as a small pry tool or long handle screwdriver to give yourself some leverage, Break the rotor retaining bolt free and remove it. Then simply remove the rotor from the hub. Now if you have a lot of surface rust here on your hub, you can go ahead and use your wire brush to clean that off, but this hub looks pretty good. I think we're ready for some new brakes. When you're choosing your replacement brake components, you wanna make sure you're choosing high quality components. This is not the time to be going with questionable components. When you replace your brakes with quality original equipment Mopar brakes like I'm gonna be using today, you know that you're putting the same great quality parts that came on your vehicle when it left the factory. Not only are you getting components that are made of the highest quality materials, but you're getting things like anti-corrosion coatings on them, the pads from Mopar feature shims on the backside that are gonna to help to keep them quiet during operation. You're also getting things like all new slides so that everything is operating at peak performance when it's installed back on your vehicle. 
we can go ahead and get our new rotors installed on the hub here and secured in place with the rotor retaining screw. It's a good idea to put a fresh coating of anti-seize on that screw when installing it. It only needs to be torqued to 15 foot-pounds. Brake rotors have a coating applied to them during manufacturing to prevent corrosion from forming before you install them. We need to clean that off with some brake clean and a shop towel. Next, we can reinstall the brake caliper mounting bracket with the two 21 millimeter bolts. These need to be torqued to 148 foot-pounds. Then we can install the four brake pad slide clips. You want to install these so that the brake pad return spring is facing away from the brake rotor. Before we can install the pads, we need to apply some brake caliper lubricant to both ears of the brake pad, then simply line the pad up with the bracket and slip them into place. When they're installed correctly, those brake pad return springs should pull the pads away from the rotor. Before we reinstall the caliper, you wanna make sure that both your slide pins are properly lubricated. Simply pull them out and remove the boot wipe them down and apply a fresh coating of brake caliper lubricant. I also like to apply some lubricant to both the inner surface and the piston surface of the caliper before I install it. With the lubricant applied, we can line up the caliper, drop it over top of the pads, and then re-secure it with the two 13 millimeter bolts. These caliper bolts should be torqued to 27 foot-pounds. That's all it takes to get your new pads and rotors installed on the front of your 2018 and newer Jeep Wrangler JL or 20 newer Jeep Gladiator JT. You can repeat these same steps over on the passenger side of the vehicle. And then make sure you remember to reinstall the cap on your brake master cylinder fluid reservoir. It's a good idea to give a couple pumps on the brake pedal before you drive off in the Jeep so that you can reset those pistons out to the appropriate position before you drive off. Now, if you guys have any comments or questions about how to replace the pads or rotors on your Jeep vehicle, you can always leave those for me down in the comment section below or contact us directly at any of the options on the screen. Of course, if you wanna get more information or to purchase anything I used in today's video, including those Mopar replacement rotors and brake pads, you can click the info button to head over to quadratech.com. And if you haven't already and you like these videos, do me a huge favor, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification icon so be sure to catch all of our latest videos. Till next time, I'm Rob. I'll see you guys out on the trail or right here in the Quadratech Academy.